Repairing a south with 12 inch steam pump. This is part 8. Machining the gunmetal blocks to make a pair of slide valves. In the previous episode I showed how to machine the two square blocks which I'm going to make the slide valves out of from a single larger piece of cast gunmetal. And now the job gets a bit nerve wracking because if I foul up at this stage I have to go all the way back to the beginning. The first thing to do is to remember that this engine is not built exactly to the drawings. So to be on the safe side, before cutting the gun metal, I'm checking the shaft sizes inside the steam chest. As you can see by the micrometer and the caliper settings, they are just under a quarter of an inch in diameter. This actually makes the job slightly easier, because I can mill the slots in the valves a quarter of an inch in diameter. I'm going to start with the most difficult valve to make. It's not really difficult, but there's more complexity in this one than the other. And here I'm fitting a 1 8 of an inch diameter slot drill in an R8 collet, which in turn is fitted to the milling machine. By now the marking out blue that I've just shown being applied to both of the top surfaces of each of the metal blocks has now dried. So I can start the marking out process. I'm really not very good at this, but I always get there in the end. The only really critical parts of these valves are the length and width of the valve slots like the one I'm just about to mill, and also the overall length of the valve block. In this clip I'm lining up the slot drill with the centre line that I described on the block. You know it's right when both points of the cutter touch the line. This is the way I do it, but if you're not too experienced I would recommend that you use something called a wiggler or a wobbler, or even an electronic centre finder. It is most important that the slot is machined in this valve in the middle. My old milling machine does not have any fancy fittings, but it does have this, the table travel limiter, and it's ideal when you're milling slots that you need to be a fixed length. Without this table limiter, there's a strong possibility that you would machine the slot in the valve a bit too long. But now I can relax and just machine away end to end on the limiter. All I need to do at each end is just drop the position of the cutter. It's a good idea to frequently remove the chippings for a couple of reasons, one being it allows you to see what you're doing, and the other reason is it stops the chippings from fouling the cutter and possibly breaking it. The milling cutter looks big in this shot because it's a highly magnified image, but in reality it is only one eighth of an inch in diameter. According to the drawing, the depth of this slot needs to be one eighth of an inch, but I haven't set anything up on the machine to do this, I'm doing it by eye as per usual. It's fairly obvious to me to do it this way because I have a reference right in front of me. The slot needs to be as deep as the slot drill is wide because it's a 1 8 of an inch slot drill. So my brain takes a photograph of the diameter of the slot drill and compares it with the photograph that my brain also takes of the depth of the slot and when both of them are about the same I think it's accurate enough. That's one job done. Nothing broke and the slot is fine. Back on the bench I've applied marking out blue to the other side and I'm making a double line mark which is a bit thicker so I can line up the quarter of an inch diameter slot drill. All these sequences by the way are speeded up slightly just to get through them in a reasonable time. I take the first cut and have a look at it to make sure it's in the middle and then I take the second cut and have another look and by this time I'm committed. I don't mean to the asylum, I mean to continue in the rest of the job with this setting. After successfully machining this slot to the required depth as shown on the drawing, I turned the slide valve round in the machine vise and machined across the other way. Once again I'm using pieces of mahogany to support the part underneath. I definitely need to buy some parallels, I do know what they are but I don't have any. It's time to look at the arrangement in the valve chest, it's a bit strange really. The crossbar that drives the valve is a machined piece of round bar bolted to the main shaft. I think I'm going to mount the valve this way around because the crossbar is closer to the port face. And to do this I machined the head of the bolt to make it slightly smaller. Time I think for a test fit. This is some 3 in 1 oil spray, I'm taking no chances scoring the face or the valve. The valve isn't a tight fit on the valve rod because it's not meant to be and it's held quite close to the port face. The steam pressure will do the rest and hold it in position. I've taken into consideration that there is a gasket to go between the steam chest and the port face. 
and in any case, with this arrangement, the valve is not held firmly against the port face to start with. One down, one to go. And the good news is, machining this valve is slightly simpler than the first one. The first job is to mill the slot. This has to be 3 sixteenths of an inch deep. Once again, I use the table limiter, and this time I'm not using a slot drill, because I haven't got a 5 30 second slot drill. Machining the valve slot continued without event, then I turned the valve over and machined the rear using a quarter of an inch diameter cutter. This is the valve that sits on the shuttle piston. Its length is exactly right, and it's quite important that the depth is exactly right too. I followed the drawing for this, I scribed a line so I knew how far to cut, but when I finally put it all together there was a minor problem. At this stage of the job I didn't realise what it was going to be like, so I continued cutting down to the line. And when I first tried it in position on the shuttle valve, I just felt that this slot was a bit too deep. Not a major problem and it was a quick fix. I press fitted and soldered a thin piece of brass to slightly lessen the depth of the slot. I'm not sure if I even needed to do this, it's good on this image though, it makes the valves look more level. Here are the pair of finished valves in position in the steam chest. This is the one on the shuttle valve and I'm just checking that it moves OK. And the other one is fitted to the valve spindle and this is operated by the valve lever. And there you have it. Hopefully the job is nearly complete. The next thing to do is to make the studs that hold the steam chest cover and the steam chest to the cylinder block. That will be in the next episode and I will also be giving it a test run on compressed air just to see if it works. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists, and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch, and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.